Thank you for spending your Saturday evening with us tonight. I'm Sarah Horvakowitz. Now it's been a pretty muggy day, but it seems to be moving out. So let's check in with meteorologist Corrales Ortiz. Now Corrales, as you said at the start of the show, it's been a pretty wet 48 hours, but things could be clearing up. Yeah, so the rest of our afternoon has been pretty much quiet. We had started off a morning with some scattered showers in the area, a little bit of some light drizzle throughout the first half of the day. It's been mostly quiet and cloudy for much of the area, still seeing some light drizzle for parts of the state. But yeah, as I mentioned, it was very wet these last 48 hours, especially yesterday when we saw record amounts of rainfall. But this is what we're seeing. Most of the rain, it's like a path right across central Arkansas, especially here up in the metro. A little bit of a closer look. We picked up anywhere from five to up to as high as eight inches of some rainfall in this general area in the last 48 hours. Most of that was from yesterday, anywhere from hot springs all the way towards the metro where just outside we picked up already six inches or more of some of that rainfall. We have more rain in the forecast to talk about, but it's quiet right now. 48 and cloudy. A light wind out of the south going into tonight. We will be quiet, not expecting much in terms of rain. It just will feel a bit damp. Temperatures will ex uh, hover around the upper 40s for tonight. What we're tracking in the forecast a mild and breezy Sunday with showers returning late Sunday, even the chance for a few strong storms for some. The war a warming trend through the weekend, along with periods of rain once again heading into the new week. So I'll have more details in that in your forecast coming up in minutes. It crashed and had a giant fireball. I saw the ball of fire, yes ma'am. I can still see the smoke. Three days after a plane crash in Little Rock, we're now hearing the 911 calls amid the chaos. The National Transportation Safety Board telling us that the investigation is ongoing. Right now, they are conducting interviews with witnesses and reviewing video. Of course, we will update both on air and online as soon as we get more information. And we have a full report on everything we know, including the five people who died in this crash and how they're being remembered. All of that information is on THV 11. Dot com. The search for a new Surgeon General is on here in Arkansas. Dr. Greg Bledsoe resigning from the position last night. Bledsoe was our state's top doctor during the Zika virus, the opioid crisis, and of course COVID-19. He announced in a tweet giving no reason. He did say it was an honor to serve the great state of Arkansas for eight years, wishing Governor Sanders administration quote tremendous success. Multiple organizations came together today to offer free HIV screenings for Arkansans. Medical providers were at the St. Bartholomew Catholic Church today in South Little Rock, offering testing, education, and treatment options for HIV, something they say is needed now more than ever. Yeah, because we were all focused on the pandemic, but HIV was still being spread every day. Now with the new medications, if a person is tested and diagnosed early, they can go on medications that could prevent them from ever acquiring AIDS. With that new medication, someone with HIV can achieve the status of undetectable. That means the disease is non-transmittable. If you missed today's event but would still like help, you can go to the Sub Award Facebook page or the Words of Serenity Facebook page. The bat problem at North Little Rock High may have an end in sight now that they're being released in the right place. That is the superintendent telling reporters he believes the bats were being released at Burns Park. After more than 100 bats were caught, Superintendent Greg Paluski says they've narrowed down a couple of entrance points that the bats may have been using to get inside. One student reports getting scratched by a bat and is being treated. Crews will use the weekend to fix those weak spots and clean the impacted areas, which include the cafeteria and kitchen. The superintendent said he'll wait till Sunday night to make a call about returning to the building on Monday. With just a few days left in Black History Month, hundreds of people gathered today at the 19th annual UAMS Mid-South Black Expo. Leaders of the event used the day to bring in different businesses and organizations, all in an effort to provide more help for the community. THV 11's Frederick Price takes us there. 100 booths set up Saturday, all with one goal in mind. It's just a full day of health, education, awareness. Teresa Timmons is the co-founder of the expo. She tells me 19 years ago when this started, she envisioned a day when organizations could simply come together. 
the attendance shows that we are beginning to understand the importance of our health. We are, we are beginning to understand the importance of community and working together. This year's theme, our health, wellness, and culture. UAMS here Saturday focusing on cancer screening. So there are a lot of underserved populations throughout this state. So we need to both provide education and cancer prevention. Michael Beer with UAMS says they are there also working to understand how the state's largest hospital can help those communities. And I hope we leave with a better idea of the kinds of gaps and barriers we need to overcome to really help our Kansans. Another way Kenya Davenport with Southern Bank Corp is working to help our Kansans is providing more access to financial resources to people. We're looking to target African Americans, particularly but people of color who have traditionally been excluded from the financial industry. She says areas south of 630 are considered bank deserts, an area where people live without a bank. She's hoping to change that. And really what we are looking to do is to provide access to places that are banking deserts, places where um, other banks are leaving. Each vendor wanting the hundreds of people who showed up Saturday to leave with important information that could improve their health and well-being. In North Little Rock, Frederick Price, THV 11 News. Thank you, Frederick. Meanwhile, a little further south, we're getting an inside look at a new museum opening called the Black Girl Magic Museum. I wanted to be the change I wanted to see, so my goal was to dismantle the negative stereotypes that society had when it came to black women and girls. New tonight at 10, we'll introduce you to the founder of this new museum coming to Dallas and all the exhibits it plans to feature. A muggy and cold Saturday like we're seeing today might have some people eager to get their alcohol delivered to the house. Even though several counties in Arkansas are still dry, a law passed during the pandemic that allows beer and wine to be delivered in the state. But now, as THV 11's Ian Russell reports, the same person who led that bill is now hoping to put those potent package deliveries back on the shelf. Buying alcohol is a pretty simple process, right? You walk in, you grab what you want off the shelf. It's as simple as that. But the pandemic allowed for a new kind of purchasing by allowing delivery straight to your door. Well, if a new bill passes, though, it'll completely get rid of that process. Your total is $65.83. It's part of the norm. Just another means of business for Clark Trim. It definitely picked up, yes, there's no question about that. But alcohol delivery wasn't always what they did at Colonial Wine and Spirits. In fact, you couldn't before the pandemic. That changed in 2020, allowing them to deliver to those 21 and up. Act 158 in 2021 made that permanent. Well, it's been positive enough that uh, Colonial has purchased two vehicles and uh, we operate those two vehicles on a weekly basis. State Senator Jane English introduced the law that became Act 158, and now she's introducing Senate Bill 284 to get rid of alcohol delivery entirely. That's something that doesn't sit right with Trim. We've invested a lot thinking that we were safe to grow into the future. We reached out to Senator English for a comment, but we haven't heard back. Clark says he understands there are some concerns, but he doesn't think they're as prominent as people think. The Arkansas Family Council sent THV 11 a statement, which reads in part, quote, Practically speaking, alcohol delivery is difficult to monitor in state law. It raises concerns about how you prevent things like underage drinking. Trim says they haven't seen that. You have to scan your ID to accept delivery, and he doesn't think others have had issues with it either. Is it an issue with underage to alcohol? If it is, someone knows about it other than me. With no word on when this could pass, Trim is hopeful for no change, not just for his business, but for the customers he serves as well. Really come up with what the reasons are, and if the reasons aren't being addressed, and, and, and see if we can't save this service to the community. In Little Rock, Ian Russell, THV 11 News. We already know that egg prices are making your weekend brunches a little more expensive, but now you can expect that mimosa to go up in price too. That's thanks to OJ. Florida citrus growers are reporting a major dip in supplies. The USDA projects that Florida will have its worst year for citrus production since the Great Depression. Devastating storms last year, like Hurricane Ian, stripped trees, but growers are facing another major problem called citrus greening disease. And this is from greening. That's from greening. Um, this fruit's from greening. Greening is sort of like cancer. Some live with it. Others, it gets them in a week. 
Greening causes oranges to fall prematurely, and once a tree is infected, there's no cure. That is leading to more expensive orange juice at the grocery store. Prices are up 9.1% in the past year, according to Nelson IQ.